Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. So this is an important one. This is a fifth seal. I just wolfed down a cake and it's stuck in my throat. Oh. Hallelujah, Father. We worship you, God. We worship you. We worship you. Just have your way. Teach us like you normally do, Daddy. Do your thing, Daddy. All right. Here we go. Open your scripture page. There we go. And we're ready. All right. Holy Spirit, have your way, Father. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, have your way. Right. Which one we're doing here today? It says, How long, O Lord? Where is it? How long, O Lord, till you exempt vengeance for our blood? Rest a while until the rest of your brothers are killed. That is the fifth seal. All right, so I hear the blood. Your brothers. Something, just a second. Your brothers' blood. <clears throat> Christ, I'll speak from the ground. Genesis 4, 10. Genesis 4, 10, reading from verse 9. Verse 9 to, what's that? 11. Here we go. And the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? I do not know, he answered. Am I my brother's keeper? So, Cain is back answering God. He's smart mouthing God. Here's what he says. He says, I do not know. So he's lying to God as well. Here's what he says in Genesis 10, verse Genesis 4, verse 10. What have you done? replied the Lord. The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now, verse 11. That's what I heard in the spirit, right? Verse 11. Now you are cursed and banished from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hands. You're going to have to give it back to me again, Daddy. I lost it. Give me a word just now when I lost it. Give me a second. This is what happens when you're just busy just cleaning all the mess that I'm making. Okay. Just give me a second. Ah. Oh, there we go. They love not their like soul of death. Okay. So Cain and Abel. If we look at Cain and Abel, Cain likes to do his own thing and Abel likes to do what God loves to do, right? What God loves. And it came down to all with, um, again, it came down to one thing, which was jealousy. And this thing is very prevalent because it's, it's all evil. All evil stems from it, okay? So the Bible tells us and it cautions us where there is jealousy, there's every kind of evil. That's why one of the commandments is, do not covet. In other words, do not get jealous. Don't jealous what other people have, you know? One the world, all right. James 3, 16, we're looking at that, but we're looking at the one before that, which was which one? Uh, they love not their lives till their death, till the death. Okay, first we're going into jealousy. James 3, 16. Just like you can remember John 3.16, remember James 3.16. All right, here we go. Verse 15, such wisdom does not come from above, but is earthly and unspiritual and demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, 
Now, what was what was Abel's crime? Abel's crime was doing what God wants, was doing according to how God wanted it done. That was Abel's crime. Cain's crime was so Abel's crime was basically um Cain, yeah Abel's crime was basically doing righteously. Okay. Such wisdom does not come from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every evil practice. Verse 17. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure and peaceable and gentle and accommodating and full of mercy and good fruit and impartial and sincere so father says listen once there's jealousy there's going to be room for evil what do you think made satan do what he did and and all this chaotic things with adam and eve and all of that it was jealousy because first he was the the leader of heaven oh, I love. Yeah. yeah monday before he was the leader of heaven's choir and well you know that i love that demonstration that apostle scott did with the um how he was you know how satan was so satan had all the attention basically and then comes adam and eve god's creation and all of a sudden it's not just satan's not the thing anymore he's not the it anymore what happens to him? He has to actually serenade them too. So instead of embracing his calling or the thing that he was made to do, what did he do? He jealous. He coveted. He hated the fact that God was fellowshipping with Adam and Eve even. Okay? Eve even. <laughs> it's funny. Eve even and Eden. Okay. So jealousy can do a lot of things, a lot of damage. So the Bible gives us one, um, that's why he wrote it, and he wrote it with his finger. He knew exactly what it was saying. Thou shalt not covet anything that is your neighbor's, or your neighbor's wife, or the donkey, or the house, or the anything. Don't covet, okay? Some people covet. Some people look at what other people have and say, oh, I want that. I should have that. That should be mine. All right. So, um, going back now into Revelations 12, 11, they love not their lives till the death. If we take a look at these people, these people that the Bible is speaking about right here, they love not their lives till the death. They are kind of extreme, aren't they? Revelations 12, 10 to, tw 10 to Revelations 12, verse 10 to 12. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now have come the salvation and power and kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. Now, why? Satan was cast down, remember? For the accuser of our brothers have been thrown down. Who's talking? Who do you think is speaking there? The accuser of our brethren? Ah, the angels are speaking. The holy angels the accuser of our brothers have been thrown down and this is what satan would do he would accuse us day and night before our god so in in the beginning with the sacrificial laws and the ordinances and all of that that they did listen satan would go before god and say huh they missed this so they didn't do that and they he would, he would, you know when someone's looking to just accuse someone or they just, they, they can't find the perfect lie, but they pinpoint every single thing that they're doing and they, they try to find something. I was Satan. Satan loves to do that. So it said, okay. So it said, just give me a second. Right. So the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down. He who accuses them day and night before our God. That is the devil's job. He, that is what he does. When it says he's, he's, the devil is 
as a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour. That is what he is. He is, well, a lion will roar when it wants to roar or when it wants to eat. Satan wants to do both. Now, 1 Peter 5, 8. Reading from verse 6 or 7 to 9. Okay, so it's slipping away. Okay, 1 Peter 5, verse 7 to 9. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Who? God. Be sober minded. Because if you're drunk, then your judgment is impaired. Listen. Be sober minded and alert. Your adversary, your what? Your friend. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. So, you know what we call the mischief makers? Yeah, we call them the mischief makers. They, they're they always looking for some kind of chaotic confusion or something. You know, they're always looking to make something, make, like, if there's something to, like, gossipers as well. Yeah? So... Satan is like that. Satan's always looking for bacchanal, but his bacchanal is to bring the soul into destruction because he hates humankind. He hates it. Anything made in the image of God, he hates it. Okay? Um, verse 7 to 9, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. First Peter 5, verse 8, be sober-minded and alert. Your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. So, you know, it's like us with the passion for Christ when we don't get one soul saved a day or at least something done that breaks, lifts up the name of Jesus, we are um, uneasy. But then Satan's agenda is the opposite. If he doesn't destroy a soul, he's not happy with himself. Okay, so we're reading more. First Peter 5, 8. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be sober minded and alert because you're the, your adversary. He's your enemy. There's no way he's going to be your friend. The devil crawls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. So even if some people like Satanists and and stuff they give in to Satan and they think he's on their side. Satan hates them too. And he's just laughing at them that hey, he got their souls. Resist him. So that's why he went to Job. Job was doing something on the morning that Satan presented himself to God. What was Job doing? Job was always making intercession for his his um his his sons. But Job was a righteous man before God as well. And Satan was saying, um, God said, have you considered Job? Job is a righteous man. A righteous man in God. Now, because of Job, Job was faithful, right? So Satan was looking at Job and he's like, hmm, this one is professing righteousness. He's He's being righteous. Is it because he has all these things, you know? And then God gives Satan permission to take away these things. To take away these things and do what? And afflict Job in the worst way as possible, but not kill him. So 1 Peter 5 verse 9, it says, resist him. Resist to Satan. Standing firm in your faith and in the knowledge that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. Let's read that again. Verse 9. Resist him. Resist the devil. Standing firm in your faith and in the knowledge. You know this. You got to know this. You got to remember this. You got to know this. That your brothers throughout the world are going undergoing the same kinds of suffering. It's not just you. 
And the Bible tells us why. Now, I just lost the word that he gave me. Darn. Let's do it again. Resist them, standing firm in your faith and the knowledge that your brothers throughout the world are going, undergoing the same times that he just gave us after the suffering. If one member... of the body suffers, then the rest suffers with it. First Corinthians 12, verse 26. First Corinthians 12, verse 26, reading from 25 to 27. Verse 25, so that there be, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its members should have mutual concern for one another. Was I not just saying something like this just now? Okay, here we go. Verse 26, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Because they're one. The body is one. Again, the glory is to God. So we, we care for each other. We try to uplift each other. And remember when he said, am I my brother's keeper? Truth is, he was. But then he killed his brother. And it shall come to pass. Uh, children will children will betray parents. Matthew Matthew ten twenty one. Matthew ten twenty one. Second. Matthew 10, 21, verse 20 to 20, ouch, 22. For it will not be you speaking, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. What does he say? Remember what he said? Um, oh, don't worry what you should say when you go to the synagogues and all that, right? Now, who are you suffering for? Why were our brethren killed? For Christ. Now, if we are all one, shouldn't we feel the pain of each other? If we are all one, shouldn't we feel the joy of each other? If we are all one and Christ is the main focus, Christ is the, the one who is getting the glory. Christ is the one who is yeah, he is our goal. Amen? So, Matthew 10, 20 to 22. For it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Your Father says, Brother will betray brother to death. To death. It didn't say it, just be betrayed. To death. And again, that's where we started up with Cain and Abel there. I don't know. And, and the father, his child. Children will rise against their parents. Their parents. And have them put to death. So remember when, uh, in many times, many, many demonstrations where um, I showed you where children will sell out their folks. They're like, hey, mommy and daddy's not feeling so well. They go to church every every Sunday or every Saturday or whatever. They go to church too much. They read the Bible too much. And the people are going to take them away. Um, they're going to replace them. Some are going to be cloned. Some are going to be um, just done away with. 
this is not good, alright? Alright, second. Looking, 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 looking. Okay, and it says, you will be hated by everyone on account of my name, but one who per perseveres to the end will be saved. So he tells us plainly, he says, I've not come to give a sort of peace, if that's what you're looking for. I'm not here to bring peace, but a sort of division, worldly from God, okay? World from God, divide. World from God, good from evil, darkness from light, okay? So, light from darkness, well, whatever, you know what I mean. Sheep from goat, everything has a difference, a differentiation and a, a, a division. Heaven and hell, everything, everything. So Jesus said, listen, I've not come to bring a sword of peace. So this thing where you're being lukewarm with me, it's not going to work. So some people like to remain quiet. And they, they, when they say, when God says, be the peacemakers, the peacemakers are the sons of God. People take that into a whole other thing and they do their thing with it. They, um, I'm going to show you now. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Blessed are the peacemakers. You see how Abraham was? Abraham was a peacemaker. How? He never contradicted the truth. And when it came for a time of rivalry, between Lot and him, he was more the humble one. So he's like, you take whatever land you want, and I'll take the other side. It's okay. I don't mind. That is peacemaking, right? So um, it's not what people think about denying the truth and having peace in that. No. Um, Matthew 10, 34. Verse 33 to 35, but whoever denies me before men, uh -huh, I will also deny him before my Father in heaven. Verse 34, do not assume that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I've not come to bring peace, but a sword. Why? Because the word of the Lord is sharper than any sword and sword. So, ouch. Verse 35, For I have to come to turn a man against his father and a daughter against his mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. So, there's a division in the family. There's a division everywhere. Okay, Hebrews 4, 12. So if your own family are against you, what do you say for strangers who don't even know you? Uh-huh. Not good. Hebrews 4, 11 to 13. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. So that's Hebrews 11, 4.11. Again, didn't I say that this morning too? Okay, verse 12. Everything seems like a deja vu kind of thing going on here. Okay, verse 12. For the word of God is quick, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of what? Of soul and spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and a discerner of the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. All right, so listen to this. So Cain didn't keep Abel. Cain didn't keep Abel and, well, yeah, well, who was the first born? One moment. So Cain didn't keep Abel 
you know, King was more looking to destroy Abel. And just like we're called to, just like we were talking about a little bit earlier, that brotherly love in the body of Christ is needed. This is exactly where it's going. So Father says, your brothers, your brethren were hated for me. And they were killed for it. They were persecuted. They were killed for it. Why? Because they upheld the testimony of Jesus Christ and they overcame the dragon by the, by the blood of the Lamb, right? So they refused to see anything else but the truth of who Jesus is, of what God could do, what who God is. Oh, sorry, the word of God and everything else they, that about Jesus. They stood up for the truth, so they were killed. All right, I don't want to say no. All right. So, um, what's the point of me saying that? Right. So they bore their witness, and they love not their lives till the death. So this is what I hear. So we're going there again. Ouch! 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 Revelations 12, 11. Again, we're going to read it. Uh, how did they conquer the enemies? How did they conquer Satan and all his plans against them? Verse 10. Ouch. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. Now it's been established. Now it is. It is what it is. For the accuser of our brothers have been thrown down. So who who is it that comes to he comes to do our dividing you know, in the body of Christ? But he so this is what I hear something like this, okay? He unites a lie, but he divides the truth. I don't know. Okay. So he who accuses them, they and I before our God. Verse 11. They have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to as to shy away from death. So they stood by it. Jesus is the Christ. He is the Savior. He is my Lord and my God. Amen. They were fearless. They were, um, they were unashamed. They just they were loving on God so hard. Um, Revelations 12, 12. Now, even if they say, renounce him or die, they chose death. Therefore, rejoice, O heavens. Um, remember in days of Romans, in the Romans Empire, where they would say, all hail Caesar. And it's either you worship Caesar or you die. You get thrown to the lions. You get burnt up like a, a human torture, tortured or crucified or something. So that's, that. it is what it is. So they didn't care. They died for the testimony. They died for us to have that Bible. That's why God loves the word so much too, you know. He loves those who uphold it. There were so many lives taken out for it. They have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Uh, they did not. Oh. Sorry. And they did not love their lives so as to shy away from death. Verse 12, Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea. With great fury, the devil has come down to you, knowing he has but a short time. So, Satan knows he has but a short time, and what is he here to do? He's not here to save souls, he's here to destroy souls. So all that he's going to do is try to rise up chaos. Okay, so now, wow, Father, you're really taking me down? Okay, we're going there. A kingdom divided against itself in a stand. In Matthew, um, or oh, in Mark, yeah, give me Mark. Give me Mark 3, 24, or Matthew 12, 22, 28. 
Oh, no, sleepy. What are you doing? Mark 3, verse 24. So, from verse 23 to 25. So, Jesus called them together. He called them how? Together. And began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? Hmm. If a kingdom is divided against itself, it cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, it cannot stand. Remember he said, and I hear him seeing someone with the body now. We're going to the body. The body has many members. Mosquitoes are biting me a little while. Where are they coming from? Okay, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12 to 31. Okay, so we're reading verse 11, the text, a rule, verse 11 to 15, or less. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 11. But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. He gives each according to his desire. 1 Corinthians 12, 12. For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, and so also is Christ. Mm. Let's read it again. For as the body is one, the body of Christ is one. And has many members or the body as in our physical body have a lot of different parts and they all work together and all the members of that one body being many are one body also is Christ so Christ is that body he is the head of that body okay we're reading verse 13 for by one spirit by one spirit the holy spirit we are all baptized into one body to the body of christ where whether we be jews or gentile whether we be bond or free and have been all made to drink in one spirit verse 14 for the body is not one member but many members. <laughs> Verse 15, If the foot shall say, Because I'm not the hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? It is of the body. Okay, so, he's just, he's, he's making me dumbfounded here. He's doing, he's saying the thing that I said before. That he gave me before. He's doing it again here. So, it all comes down to being one, to standing as one. And what do we stand one for? That is it. What do we stand as one for? Why do we have, why do we stand as one body together? To bring God glory. Something about chains. Fall, fall in chains. Philippians 1, so we're going to check Paul and his chains. Philippians 1, verse 12. Oh, I'm getting a bad tummy. Okay, Philippians 11, 1, 11, as we're taking the verse before and after, all right? So Philippians 1, 11 to 13. Filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory 
and the praise of God. Why are we filled up? To the glory and the praise of God. Why are we baptized into one body? For the glory and the praise of God. All right. Verse 12. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. Verse 13. Well, here's what he's saying. Hey! Wow, the word just got like just huge. Okay. As a result, it's become clear throughout the whole palace guard and everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. That's what I heard. Full chains for Christ. Okay. And verse 14. And because of my chains, listen, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. So we are brought together to the glory and praise of God. That is why the Spirit is quickening us. Okay? Ouch. Now listen to this, verse 15. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. In verse 16, the latter do so out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. So, Paul embraces those chains. He counts being persecuted as a strong thing. Why? Because everybody else who is lifting up the gospel or who is scared to come out have now received a strength. All the palace gods, all the, the ones who locked him up, come on. There was even um, a jailer. Remember the prison guard that was baptized? Remember he asked Paul and to life, how can I be saved? Paul considers being persecuted. In other words, when they come to arrest him, he's like, yes. <laughs> he's like, he's happy about it. Because God's glory is seen and the hatred towards his truth is being made known. So Paul embraces it. All right. Um. So it says, they become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. And it is true that some preach Christ of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing I'm put here for a defense of the gospel. Okay, here we go. The former, the ones before, preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but supposing that they can stir up trouble for me. While I'm in chains. Who is he talking about? The Pharisees. The Sadducees. Okay? But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from a false motive or true, listen to how we think, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Alright. So, remember where the Bible says, for me, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Philippians 1, 21. Oh, he's lining up scripture. So just a couple verses are down. Verse 20, Philippians 1, 20 to 22. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have complete boldness, so that now as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether in life or by death. And you know what he says? The righteous are what? Are as bold as a lion. Proverbs 28, 1. 
if another person saw him talking, they'd be like, "You nuts! What do you mean you you want you you want to glorify God in your body with with what? Being alive or dead? You want to you want to exalt him? You want to you you don't care if you die? But listen, he knew in whom he trusted. I knew in whom I believed." Proverbs 21, 28, 1, sorry, 1 to 2, or 3. Oh, we got to read 27 first. Just a second. Proverbs 27, the last verse. Proverbs 27, 27. Can anyone remember it? And thou shalt have goat's milk, enough for thy food, for the food of thy household, and for the maintenance of thy maidens. Why? Because you put God first. Proverbs 28, verse 1 to 2. The wicked sleep, but no man pursue it. But the righteous are as bold as a lion. Because the lion of Judah were bold in. A land in rebellion has many rulers, but a man of understanding and order. A, a man of understanding and knowledge maintains order. And of course, what does that mean? Well, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding and knowledge. The fear of the Holy One is... The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and understanding. Right. And the knowledge of the, the fear of the Holy One is knowledge. Something like that. Okay, we have to go. Okay, let's go there. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and understanding. The knowledge of the Holy One. No, read it. We're going to read it properly. I don't want to fumble upon it. Proverbs 9 10. I don't want to mix it up. Okay, 17. Am I missing something? Okay, Proverbs 9 9. Instruct a wise man, and he will be wiser still. Teach a wise, a righteous man, and he will increase in his learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and under, wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Right. For true wisdom, your days will be multiplied, and years will be added to your life. All right. So Paul was looking at this thing like you know. It's like a thorn in my flesh. If I live, I live to the glory of God. And if I die, I die to the glory of God. Okay. So, so you know, like, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that I, I can, I'm bringing glory to God either way. So, 2 Corinthians 12. 68. Even if I should choose to boast, I will not be a fool because I would be speaking the truth. Who do we make our boasting in? Jesus. But I refrain so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or I say. Verse 7. Or because these surpassingly great revelations, therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh. Okay, so just a second. Let me get this in King James Version. A messenger. King James Version. Six eight. Okay, so I was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above me, above measure. What does that mean? Least that he should not be humble. You know, he, he wants to be humble, so he's he's like he sees why. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, three times, that it might depart from me. But God knows what we have need of. And remember, remember that Bible verse that says something like, 
um, God gives us over to Satan that for the, the destruction of our flesh that at judgment our spirit is saved, our soul is saved. One moment, please. Second Corinthians twelve, uh, verse. Where are we? Verse. Verse eight. Okay, so verse nine. And he said to me, "My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness." Most gladly. Therefore, I would rather glory in my infirmity that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecution and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then I am strong. Amen. So our strength doesn't lie in the world. It doesn't lie in in the things that we trust except it lie in Christ. Our strength is in Christ. And Father is saying, listen, look at Paul's outlook on it. He is like, whatever I do, I'm glorifying God. Because he decides to walk, walk the path, right? So whether he lives, whether he dies, it's like, what can you do with me? And Satan's like confused. He's like, I don't know what to do with this guy. Because when he's alive, he's bringing souls. And when he's dead, he died for the testimony. So Satan doesn't know what to do with him, right? Confuse the devil, which is a good place to be. Yeah. Good. Anyway, so we're looking now at our brethren before us. Now, they were all made to carry chains for Christ. All for trusting in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Yep, you know how many of them got killed. And even for the birth of Jesus alone, all the babies that got killed over or under two years old, sorry. Two years old and under, I think, right? Yeah, two years old and under. It's under everything. Yeah, two years old and, and under. All those babies got killed. And... I mean, so many people have been martyred, so many martyred for Christ, so many died, so many give their lives. And the Bible says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. They hold the testimony. They refuse to let it go. Jesus is the Christ. He is the Holy One. And of course, his father. Um, they overcame their challenge, whatever they were placed to, wherever they were placed to. It could be in a gallow, it could be at a king's, um, a king's order, it can be at authorities, it can be at Caesar's ring, whatever, wherever they were in a den of lions, it doesn't matter where they were, wherever they were, whether they were chosen to give witness with their lives or not, they stood and they are standing today to, to declare that the word of God is true. Amen? The word of God is true because the Holy Spirit of truth has come in, even Jesus Christ himself, who is the spirit of truth, who is the Holy Spirit, Father. Okay, so they stand with the truth, unable to and deciding not to, having decided, having done all to stand wherever they go, lifting up the name of Christ, lifting up his holy word. And however it had to happen, it had to happen. Now, there are souls of the martyr crying out under the tabernacle of heaven, um, under the altar of heaven. We're going there right now. So once in a while, even though we're on our journey, remember what I said earlier with um, 
choose one thing and say you can do it on your own and you'll you begin to fail at it yeah i remember when i said that so i really meant that um what was i going to say just now i lost it i lost it i lost it I'll get about, I'll get about, I'll get about. Oh my goodness, I get about. Come on, it was so important. Where did it go? Sorry, I should have started typing. All right. So we are dependent on Christ, and He's our only source. All right. So what I was going to say was, God will allow us to go through trials. He will allow us to face things, even if. And even when we are in Him, that it would always bring us down to a humble thing, a humil, a humble perspective, a place of humility. God loves humility. Amen. He loves humility, and He's He's just He loves. The Bible says the Lord loves a broken heart and a contrite spirit. I hear him saying something else. Do not, do not harm the earth and the trees until the servants are sealed. The Lord loves a broken heart. Okay, Psalms 51, 17 gives us a little bit of a insight. And it says, for you do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You take no pleasure in burnt offerings. You don't delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. And you take no pleasure in burnt offerings. Verse 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken, contract heart. You, O oh God, you will not despise. In your good pleasure, cause Zion to prosper and build up the walls of Jerusalem. What was the thing I said after that? Um, do not harm. So right now, what is happening is the sealing. The sealing of the people of God with the Spirit of God. And when the Spirit of God is here, He casts out fear. All right, so we're looking at Revelation 7 3. Wow, my eyes. My eyes burn. I'm not sleepy. Why am I in Revelation 7 3? Verse 2 to 4, I saw another angel ascending from the east with the seal of the living God. And he called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Do not harm the land or sea or trees until we have sealed the forehead of the servants of our God. Where is the mark of God going? Smack. Forehead. Okay, and what is in there? Your mind. There we go, your mind. Of the servants of our God. And I heard the number of those who were sealed were 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. All right, so now our scripture verse. Let's go for our scripture verse. Where's our scripture verse? Uh, one second. I'm alone up here, am I? Oh, Jesus is here with me. All right, nobody's there. Um, all 
All right, so let's go into today's scripture verse. And it says, where's my scripture page? Okay. What did it say? When I sold the souls, just now. Oh, I want it exactly as it was given, okay? Exactly as it was given, please. Oh, come on. Oh, you're early, man. You're real early. <laughs> Shalom. You did? Yeah. Just now, I'm trying to get my internet working. Okay, we'll just use this one. I'll open the next page. Okay, here we go. Today... Okay, so now we go into the scripture page, the scripture verse. I want it exactly as I said. Okay, how long? How long, O oh Lord, till you exempt vengeance for our blood? Guess what we're going to look at now? We're going to look at the souls crying out for redemption under the, the altar. All right, so how long? How long, O oh Lord? Oh, yay! Oh, la la! Yay! Oh, okay, not now, not destruction. Okay, how long, O oh Lord, shall you exempt vengeance? Thus says the Lord, vengeance is mine. Remember what he said that? You're saying that? Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. All right, so wow, put our blood on the earth. So we're looking at where's Revelation? Where, what is this? I don't know what it is. Okay. Revelation 6, 10. Here we go. From verse 9 to 11. Yes, please. Verse 9 to 11. And when the Lamb opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the... Come on across. The word and for the testimony that they had upheld and they cried out in a loud voice. So they know so they don't whisper and they say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're crying out to God with a loud voice. So God is gonna pay attention. You think he's gonna pay attention? You think or you just like don't relax? No, no. Yeah, yeah, you can have one. Have one. Here's what he says. And they cried out in a loud voice. How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge those who live on the earth and avenge our blood. So they want vengeance. Amen? No, that's like that's like Abel's blood that was crying out to God and saying he has been unrighteously dealt with amen so what i heard was vengeance is mine says the lord and we're looking in uh, romans and um, romans romans 12 19. romans 12 19 and it says if it is possible on your part, live at peace with everyone. If it's possible, do not avenge yourselves. No, no, no. Don't go attacking anybody, okay? Don't want to take my own advice. Verse 19. Do not avenge yourselves, beloved, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, and I will repay. Remember when Jesus said, behold, I'm coming quickly to give 
to reward each man. Behold, I am coming quickly to give to each what? According to what? Revelation 22, 12 tells us, Behold, I'm coming quickly. I'm reading verse 12. Um, verse 11 to 13. Let the unrighteous continue to be unrighteous. Let the righteous continue to practice righteousness. Let the holy continue to be holy. Verse 12. Behold, I am coming quickly. And my reward is with me Aha. to give to each person according to what he has done. What did you do for the Lord? I am coming quickly and my reward is with me. God bless you, brother boy. Here we go. And it says to give to each person according to what he has done. Verse 13. I am the Alpha. And the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. If you didn't know who Jesus was, just read Revelations. You'll find out really quickly who he is. Loving Father becomes very, very angry now. Now check this out. We're reading Romans 12, verse 20. On the contrary... If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. That's what he meant. You know, make peace. Keep coals on his head. That's what I heard. Well, yeah, well, it's right here. Okay. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. <laughs> Fast as if you eat it and drink it. <laughs> oh gosh, listen. So if he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. So you ever heard them kill them with kindness? You ever heard this thing for kill them with kindness? So that's what God is talking about. You know, he says, be you are to be as perfect as your father is, and we are to be as holy as he is. So, he sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. He provides, he keeps us all, right? Until they go a little too far, then Satan snatches them. Now, okay, going back into Revelation 6. Revelation 6 verse 10. And they cried out in a loud voice, How long, O Lord? That's our question. That's what we want to know. How much longer? Well, not much longer. But God says the ceiling is happening. Not the roof, okay? Not on the roof. I'm talking about the ceiling of the Holy Spirit. So we're not looking at the ceiling on the roof. Not, not that. No, no, no. We're looking at the ceiling of the Holy Spirit. And the ceiling of what? The mark of God in the forehead that is you will consciously choose good you will consciously choose god you will consciously know good and evil and choose good the stealing has been happening and it's still happening and the bible says well we don't know how long how much longer but we can take a look and see that it is quickening and the times of the end are upon us amen so it says and they cried out in a loud voice, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge those who live on the earth? So it tells us something. Satan is here throwing a fit and kicking up like a spoiled child that got punished. That's what Satan's like. Satan's like a crazy person that just keeps attacking God, thinking he can win. And the no matter the amount of slaps or taps, or crush on his head he's getting he, he's just not learning his lesson because when angels fall that's it they stay that way so we're looking at what's your right in there what is the chinese name what revelation 25. 
What's it called? What's the Chinese name for us? I don't know what nonsense. Siling. Oh, really? No, you make up that. What nonsense. <laughs> All right. So here's what he says. What do you call a lion swimming in the sea? A sea lion? Yes, a sea lion. <laughs> All right. I'm so, brother, you know. huh? No, you're not. I just gave it away. I shouldn't have said it. See. <laughs> All right, here we go. So, verse 10, and they cried out in a loud voice. I'm the next one, no? I'm the next one. Yeah, you have a choice. No? Okay. And they cried in a loud voice. How long, O Lord? True, holy and true. Who's holy and true? God. Remember, we were talking about that earlier? People profess to be holy, but they're not holy. God is holy. No matter how, we could go through this life without doing one single sin. As long as you're in this flesh, you are a sinner. And God alone is holy. God alone is good. God alone is true. God alone is perfect. God alone. God alone. That's why we say he's worthy. He's worthy to receive what? All honor and glory and praise and power. Amen. So here we go. It says, how long till you judge those who live on the earth and avenge our blood? They've been waiting a while, but they got to wait some more. Then verse 11 says, then each of them was given a white robe and told to rest a little while longer until the full number of their fellow servants, their brothers, were killed. Just as they had been killed. Why were they killed? For the testimony of Jesus Christ and refusing to deny the saving grace of God by the blood of Jesus. That's why they were killed. People don't want to talk about that, but it is what it is. All right. What is my next fish? They're washing on the fish. I feel like if I'm swimming with fishes right now in a net. Don't tell me I'm a fish or a man, so I'm supposed to like fish. <laughs> I know you're coming with that. Anyway, Revelation 6, verse 12. And when I saw... Okay, so there's something happening now. So after the sealing, we have something to look forward to. And what is it? At the sixth seal, there's a great earthquake. Woohoo! And the sun became black. A sackcloth. And the whole moon turned blood red. So, even right now, it may look bad now, but it's not bad yet. It's not. It's now getting there. This is the beginning of sorrows, and people are crying. What happens when the labor pains really do pick up? Yeah, it's not going to be good. I have to dock and out a picture, and I'll show you guys what I saw with the horse. Just, I think it was Saturday. I think it was Sunday. Saturday. I think it was Saturday with the horse. And a hand holding a baby. So I'll show you. Um, Father is saying that the ceiling is still going on. There are still people coming to Christ. There are still people who are hungry to know God. They're just being held back by one thing. Guess what? Religion. Man-made traditions. Fear. So until they know Christ, that fear cannot flee. Amen? So that fear has to flee, that fear has to go. And uh, when they come to know Christ, the Bible says that the truth, when he comes, he shall, what? He shall set you free. So the souls of the martyr, they're going to get their revenge. God is going to be their vengeance. And we are going to be crying out with them. Some of us, if that rapture doesn't happen very soon. Because the uprising is near, and it is here. And you've got to be prepared, just like Paul, to say whether I live or I die, God is exalted in it. And Satan is confused. He's like, I don't know if to kill this one, or I don't know if to keep her alive. Because whatever happens, God is glorified. It's a win-win. Amen? Even if. Even if I'm convinced, okay, here we go. I am convinced 
that there is nothing. Come on. I am convinced that nothing can separate me from the love of Christ. Let's read that right now. Romans 8.38. The souls are crying out just like Abel, Abel's blood cried out in the earth. Because Cain was heating on him for righteousness, so he killed him. Out of what? Jealousy. Why? Because God received Abel's sacrifice of the lamb, and Cain's beetroot was in reach. Cain said, well, look, the two look in the same. It doesn't matter which one is which. The beetroot is the same as red blood. So go blend it in a blender and make blood. But it's not the same as a lamb, is it? And there is there is a point for the lamb because the lamb pointed to Christ. It pointed to God as the lamb. God didn't say I'm the be of the I'm the be of heaven. <laughs> I'm the be of heaven. He never said I'm the be of heaven. He said I'm the lamb of heaven. Amen. Amen. He didn't say, Behold, the be true that take away the sins of the world. What was Cain thinking? He wasn't thinking something good, was he? He wasn't thinking something good at all. So, I mean, he, he wanted to do what he wanted to do, whatever he felt like. And God is calling us in this hour to say, Listen, that we should. Be aware of this. Taking up the cross and walking with it. Carrying the cross. Carrying the truth. Standing in what God is pleased by and not what we want to be pleased by. Alright? So the ceiling is still happening. They're still working on the ceiling. When the ceiling is finished, then the end will come. Because the Antichrist would have been revealed by then. Romans 8, 38 to 39. For I am persuaded. This is no exception. We have, we have to read. Huh? We persuaded our what? Without our ice cream? I don't, I don't understand. I didn't get any ice cream today. I didn't have any. Romans 8, 37, 39. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. That loves us. That loves us. For I am persuaded. I am convinced. That what? That neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, or things to come, no height, no depth, no no depth, no or other creature, any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ our Lord. Amen. So the sealing is happening right now, and our effort is to give permission. So you got to decide if you want to be sealed and go into heaven today. You have that decision. Otherwise, when it's done, it's done. And just like the flood came, they were drinking and marrying, giving in marriage, and making merry, and then the rain came down. You've got to decide today. The Bible says, let he who is holy be holy still. Let he who is unrighteous do unrighteously still. There's a ceiling happening. It's a choice that you're making. You're either opposing God or you're standing with God. Which one are you doing? Which one? Oh, the prayer book is pretty. It's either you're on heaven's side or you're against heaven. I tell you, if you don't make a decision, a decision will be made for you. You cannot be lukewarm. You must be hot. 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 Coal is not an option. We don't have the option, coal. <laughs> you will step into hot water and like it. You will feel the fire of the presence of God refined by the word, you will pick up the word and carry it. 
because he died for you. Because he loves you. So love him back. Come on. How hard is it? It's not hard at all. So Father's saying, the sealing is happening. They're not all sealed yet. It's from every tribe of Israel. Right now, you make your choice. You make your choice. Do you want to be in heaven or hell? You are going to be either or. And Satan is around to sift. He's waiting for you to slip up. Slightest one. If you say, remember what I said earlier? If you say you could do something on your own, you will begin to feel as it immediately. You can do nothing without him. He's the vine. We are the branches. Like a grape that has nothing to hold on. If it does not have the vine, that's us. We can do nothing without him. We can do nothing without being in him. Without him in us. That is he. He has to be greater. He has to be allowed. Give him dominion. Give him. Give him um, full preference. Give him first. Let him be the leader. Let him be God over you. And you be cre creation. Be the created that was made for his glory. Amen? Amen. All right, love it. I hope this was encouraging to you. If it was, share it with someone. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Shabbat shalom when it comes. Sabbath is coming very, very soon. You have another chance to keep the Lord's Sabbath holy and just enter into rest with Him. Do what is pleasing to Him. Go out there, do charities. Labor for the kingdom if you have to. Till you sweat. Till you sweat. Labor for the kingdom. If you have to, on the Sabbath, go work hard. Work hard for Him. Amen. Work hard for Him. And sweat if you have to. Get tired for the gospel. If you want to work on Sabbath, go ahead, do it. But make sure it's about his kingdom. Make sure you seek him first. Amen? All right, beloved. Let's thank God for the message today. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for leading us where, where you want us to, Father. But even as I hear you saying the things, go into... Uh, incense, a bowl with incense, and it goes up into your nostrils. And I see the angel taking the coal from the altar, Lord God, and putting it in the bowl and then flinging it to the earth, Father. We know that your time is coming where vengeance will be exempted, Lord God. We know that the sealing of your people is happening even now, Father. You're quickening your people by the Spirit, Father. We know even now, Lord God, that you will not hurt the earth and the trees and the seas until the sealing has happened, Father. We know the coming of the Antichrist is soon, and we know that if we have to bear witness with our lives, Lord God, then so be it for your glory, Father. Like Paul said, Lord God, to live or to die, either way, it's your, you're going to be exalted. It's your glory. And we are but the created for your glory. So have your will, Lord Jesus, and quicken us by your fire and your spirit. Quicken us that we may be in heaven with you again for all eternity. Abba, Father, thank you for your word. We love you in your holy and most precious name, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Our beloved, that's it for now. If he gives me something else, because I heard him talking about the angel with the censer and the coal. So... Maybe there's another part I'll see later when I come on. Yeah, I'll see you in his holy and most precious name, Jesus Christ. Father, just bless these two especially. Bless them. Bless their socks off that they were able to show up and just receive a word, Lord God. Release their anointing upon them and seal them off with the fire of the Holy Spirit, Lord God. Quicken them to do your work and bless their hands so they would prosper in everything that they do. In Jesus' name. Anybody else that would come on to watch? Anybody else that would give an amen or a hallelujah and share this. Bless them, Lord God, as they do your work. In Jesus' name. God bless you, beloved. Shabbat shalom. Bye for now.